All right, so let's name the other um, ami. So in here, um, you have uh, tertiary amine. So um, we have two R groups attached to the nitrogen. And you could think of this as the parent amine um, because it's got the most number of carbons um, attached to that amine. So this right here would be um, cyclopentane, right? And then we'll drop the E and then add amine to it. And then um, on the nitrogen, we have two methyl groups. So just like uh, how you did the um, amide, you're gonna have N, N to indicate the two methyl groups that are um, on the nitrogen. And it would be N, N dimethyl cyclopentanamine. All right. Um, and then the last uh, nomenclature problem, which is draw to amino ethanol. So notice in here, you have two functional groups, the amine group and the alcohol group. And the alcohol group is higher in priority than the amine group. So that takes the uh, higher priority or you have to take the alcohol as the parent substituent, a parent naming. And therefore the amino group becomes a uh, substituent. So F, is so let me draw this out here f is two carbon long and um you have ethanol and then this is carbon one understood to be and this is carbon two and that's where the uh, amino group is so then you um, put in the hydrogens and that's what it would look like now if this nitrogen was had r group on it so then in front of this uh might be N N dimethyl amino uh, ethanol or something like that. Um, so anything attached to the nitrogen will come in the front of that name. All right. So you should be able to do uh, these nomenclature problems: twenty-three point one, two, four, five, six, and seven. Um, and um, please bring those to the class. And any questions you have, we'll go over that in class. All right. So now we're ready to um, talk about the uh, physical properties and structure of amine. And as you know, um, nitrogen is an sp3 hybridized um, with three groups, three atoms attached to that nitrogen. Um, so I'll draw it over here. Nitrogen normally has um, three groups attached to it, and then you have the lone pair um, on that nitrogen. So the mean with three different substituents on nitrogen can um, theoretically be chiral, but uh, what happens is that the inversion occurs so rapidly at room temperature with, with the um, amount of energy that is needed to invert is only uh, two times the carbon-carbon um, single bond rotation um, energy so it in other words it's flipping back and forth um, fast enough that we can't capture it so even though theoretically it's possible to have chiral means um, it's, it's not isolated usually all right so um, because it's sp3 hybridized uh, the angle uh, about them is about 109 degrees just like um, very close to the um, a tetrahedral carbon. All right. Now, because um, hydrogens that are attached to um, nitrogen can also hydrogen bond, if you have hydrogens on the nitrogen, it can hydrogen bond as shown here. All right. Now, the electronegativity difference between um, sorry, neg electronegativity can't spell and talk at the same time. Nitrogen is around three, oxygen is 3.5. Um, so oxygen is more, a lot more electronegative than nitrogen. So when it hydrogen bonds, as shown here, I've made, I've um, deliberately um, drew the hydrogen bonding to be longer 
than uh, hydrogen bonding with an oxygen because the electro uh, oxygen is more electronegative the hydrogen bonding in amine is not as strong as um, hydrogen bonding with the oxygen just to um, keep that in mind all right so hydrogen bonding occurs so what happens um, the upshot of this is that um, the stronger the hydrogen bonding, the higher the uh, boiling point, right? So if, if the hydrogen bondings are strong, more energy is going to be needed to, to uh, break this apart so that it could become vapor, right? So you should be able to answer this question, rank the following compounds in order of increasing boiling point. So uh, what is being asked there is really how strong are the intermolecular forces? So take a look at each of the uh, compounds, see if you could rank them. Um, so butanamine, butanol, so these are all um, pretty much similar in molecular weight, diethylether, and butane. So butane doesn't have any functional groups. So that's going to be the, um, the the lowest um, boiling point. All right, so we'll give that uh, one. Then the diethyl ether, uh, which looks like this, doesn't have hydrogen bonding. It just has dipole dipole. So that's going to be the next uh, in boiling point. And then um, you have um, choice between butanamine. All right, so you have one, two, three, four with an amine or butanol. All right. And because the um, alcohols uh, tend to have a stronger um, hydrogen bonding compared to the amine hydrogen bonding, um, this is going to have the uh, ranking of three, and then this is going to be the highest. Um, in terms of boiling point, all right. Now, the probably the most important characteristic of amine that you could remember, um, if you don't remember anything else at all, is the fact that the amines with the lone pair are basic as far as um, organic compounds go. Okay, so if you're looking at all the different functional groups in organic chemistry. Overall, amines with a lone pair of electrons available are um, basic. All right. In other words, it's able to grab H plus, all right? And we could tell that by the uh, pKa. So if pKa value is high, the higher the pKa, then uh, that means it's more basic. All right, so what will happen is if you have an amine in and and if it's uh, soluble in water, what will happen is that um, there will be an equilibrium process going on in which you will um, grab the proton of the water and form this um, hydroxide anion uh, ammonium salt uh, type of um, complex. All right. Now, Usually the equilibrium is is um, is to the uh, left um, in this case with water. Um, but if you, for example, um, put in a, an outright acid, then the equilibrium will definitely be to the right, where the um, amine is able to use the um, the lone pair on the nitrogen and grab the proton and then form the uh, ammonium chloride salt. All right. Now, if you want to go back to the free amine, 
then you're going to have to use some kind of base in this example sodium hydroxide but you saw this with cocaine as well um, if you use sodium bicarbonate or, or some kind of base then you could go back to the free amine all right so we're going to look at uh, what makes uh, an amine group basic and what makes it not so basic so at the end of this lecture you should be able to look at a structure like this and ask yourself which of the site which functional group is going to be the most basic function uh, not a uh, most basic site all right so let's look at some of the trends in in basicity and if you look at the um, this trend right here, uh, when you have an amine ammonia with no R groups, um, the pKa is 9.25. If you have one R group is 10.66, and if you have two R groups is 10.73. So the trend that you see in general is that the uh, more R groups, uh, nitrogen higher the pKa or we could say more basic all right second uh, trend that you see is um, this diethylamine is pKa is 10.49 but the even though this is uh, also um, uh, substituted with two R groups, but in a cyclic manner, the pKa of that is 11.27, right? What is the difference? The difference is sterics, all right? So um, less steric, more basic, as is seen with uh, a five-member ring here, right? So in a five-member ring, the alkyl groups are not flopping about uh, the nitrogen, but it's sort of tied back, if you will, in a ring. So it's, it's not as um, um, sterically hindered when you have two alkyl groups that are um, kind of spread out as much as possible. All right. And then the last one is um, notice that these are anilines the benzene ring with the NH2 are anilines so we have three anilines versus cyclohexylamine all right if you look at the pKa cyclohexylamine is 10.8 whereas all these other ones are in the uh, 4.6 range all right so Obviously, the anilines are not as basic as cyclohexylamine. So that's a resonance factor. So in other words, the lone pair on the nitrogen, right, on the cyclohexylamine is available. It's not sharing with anything. So remember the definition of basicity amine is amine with the lone pair electrons available. To be able to go grab a proton, they're going to be more basic. Whereas the anilines, the lone pair is sort of tied up in the ring. You could draw a resonance structure where the lone pair is here, and then here, and then here. So whenever you have resonance with nitrogen lone pair, it's going to cause the amine to be uh, decreasing in basicity. All right, so all of these three, you should also be able to tell me which of the three are the most basic because you have um, nothing on here. So you're basically comparing hydrogen versus methyl group versus nitro group. And if you recall from um, your aromatic chemistry, remember this was an electron donating group and this was an electron withdrawing group. All right, so I'm going to let you think about that before we answer that on the next lecture.